Hello and welcome to the introduction to Python. My name is James Derrick and I'm just going to go over some of the formats of this course, give you a bit of an introduction to it and a bit of the uh, expectations I have for you and what you should hope to get out of this course. So the introduction to Python course consists of 10 individual lessons, each being about 30 to 45 minutes each in total. Each lesson consists of a presentation and an exercise. Presentation will last 10 to 15 minutes and the exercises will generally last 15 minutes to half an hour. Lesson presentations will work uh, like this. We'll be, you'll have a small window of me talking with my talking head uh, in the bottom of your screen and I will be giving a demonstration and explanation with some visual aids perhaps on the main screen, uh, mostly through an IPython console. You should follow along with the Jupyter Notebooks. I'll explain what those are in a moment, but you should have Jupyter installed if you follow the prerequisites, and you can make any notes that you need in there. I recommend having two screens for this because it's ideal. You can have one where you watch what I'm doing on one screen, and then you can have another where you can make your notes and record, try things out as you go. Just do remember, the Jupyter Notebooks contain far more than we will cover. Those will be used for reference material and as a guide, something you can look back on once you've completed the course to refresh your memory. The lesson exercises come at the end of each lesson and they are in the Jupyter Notebooks, as are locations where you can put your answers down. These generally cover the fundamentals of the courses we'll be talking about. Non-starred exercises may concern topics we don't cover in the lessons, but you should do the starred exercises first. These are particularly important. There are more exercises in each lesson than I would really expect you to complete in the session. They are there for you to practice. They are there if you uh, somehow manage to get through them all, if you're a wizard Python, or perhaps you're an already competent programmer who just wants to transition into a new language, in which case this is why we have such a variety of abilities coming to attend this course. We have a variety of exercises to keep most people busy. I should also say there are no model answers to any of the questions. Uh, I do provide answers. These are more meant to be taken as examples of the way that I might answer these or somebody might answer these questions with the knowledge that I assume that you have. Do not take them as the description of what you should or shouldn't do because that is not what they are. They are just a way that these exercises could be solved. Okay, so the next stage is to look at Jupyter Notebooks and the IPython interpreter. To open your Jupyter Notebooks, you should first have installed Jupyter as per the prerequisites. Then you need to find the zip of all of the course materials which will have been provided to you beforehand. Once you have unpacked that, you need to navigate to that folder and open it in either PowerShell, like I am, or in the command line. Once you're here, we can uh, just type out Jupyter, remember Jupyter, space notebook. If you run this command, this will then launch a Jupyter session and it opens in your default browser like this. Your Jupyter folders will show up in this, in this directory. Now you'll see quite a few things that you probably don't have access to in your folder. That's because I'm in my development version. I have all of the draft material, the answers, and a bunch of other things as well. To access individual notebooks, you just need to find the notebook you're interested in and click on it. That will launch a new tab and you'll be able to interact with your Jupyter Notebooks in here. Now, fundamentally, each Jupyter Notebook consists of cells, which are these highlighted areas here. This is a cell, this is a cell, and this is a cell. The text cells, if you double click on them, are in fact markdown. This means that you can type out with markdown syntax and you can add your own comments or edit what you see in the notebooks. If you then run those cells, they convert back to HTML. If you wish to enter your own cell for making notes, you can just hit the plus button, go here, and then change that to markdown. Now, you can write 
in your own notes. And then you can run those cells to turn them into HTML. You can also delete cells and you can add additional coding cells. Coding cells look like this. They contain Python code and when you execute them, that code is run. Anything that remains that is unused, like a statement that returns something that isn't assigned, that is then output to screen like so. Okay, so that's the Jupyter Notebook. The one thing to remember when working with these is that this is actually where the Python is being run. This needs to stay open whilst you're working with your Jupyter Notebook. If you, uh, for some reason, close the, uh, the shell, then if we go back to the Jupyter Notebook, you can see we get a connection failed error. What this means is that if you want to keep your Jupyter Notebooks running, you have to keep the PowerShell or the command line window open. Now, I'm not really going to be showing you much of these notebooks during the lessons because I'm going to be demonstrating things in the IPython console. What's that? Well, IPython console is basically, it's a, another Python package that I have installed called IPython. I use it considerably and I really like it as a form of teaching. To run it, all I have to do is type IPython. Well, first of all, I have to install it, but I already have it installed. Type IPython, hit enter, and now we're in an interactive Python session. What this means is that I just need to type some code and this will be interpreted as code and then any result will be output to screen, much like we saw in the Jupyter Notebooks. If I press up on the keypad, that goes through the last used commands, both in your Jupyter Notebook, so you can see this cell was one that we had before, and also in the IPython interpreter. If you wish to leave IPython, all you have to do is type quit and then you can run back in again. And that's all there is to it. I look forward to the coming lessons. Each lesson will additionally begin with a slide like this one, listing the objectives for that particular lesson. It will then be followed at the end of each lesson by a slide of key points, which are the key points that we've covered through that lesson in an identical format.